This video will show you everything you need to know about the resin bound surfacing system from IGO International. Here is a couple of before and after pictures. Basically you will see the resin bound paving system installed over various surfaces such as concrete, tarmac and other existing surfaces. Resin Bound is the fastest growing surfacing solution in the UK. It is being embraced by landscapers, developers and surfacing contractors nationwide who are quickly recognizing it as a considerable sales opportunity. There are many hard surfacing systems available on the market, including bitmac, concrete, block paving and imprinted concrete. No other surfacing system offers the same range of strengths, resistances, structural and aesthetic benefits as resin bound. These include permeability. As more houses are built, the risk of flooding increases. As a result, the government has introduced legislation which requires all new driveways to comply with SUDS regulations. SUDS is the Sustainable Urban Drainage System. Resin Bound meets all planning requirements for new builds and renovations when it's laid on a suitable porous base, such as a special concrete or open textured bitmac on top of Type 3 stone. Let's look at just how permeable it is. The permeability of Resin Bound is 850 litres per square metre per minute. It's never going to rain that hard. Here's a simple way to show your customers the permeability. Low maintenance, the resin bound aggregate system is incredibly strong and durable and will remain so for many years thanks to its low maintenance needs. As well as being permeable, resin bound is also easy to clean and is achieved by just a simple jet wash. It's also resistant to oil spillage. If you accidentally spill oil onto it, it's easily cleaned off with hot water, washing up liquid and a jet wash. Due to the close-knit texture of the surface, it's also extremely weed resistant, unlike block paving. If you also add in the fact that resin bound does not fade, is frost and slip resistant and gives a beautiful seamless finish, then it's easy to see why it's growing so quickly in popularity. Fantastic choice of colours. So from golden quartz to white flint, the vast array of naturally coloured stone provides a huge amount of choice to customers. Create any designs. A resin bound system can be adapted into any shape imaginable, providing a beautiful alternative to paving, tarmac or concrete. Standard or formable beading is very flexible and can be used to create any number of visually exciting designs. Whatever shape your customers want, circle, square, star or even their own logo, Beading is available in a variety of sizes and depths to provide stunning results for this. Over time, the difference between using a UV-resistant resin and a non-UV-resistant resin can really start to show. If we look at these samples, for example, the top one is 2 to 5 mil silver grey using a UV-stable resistant resin. The one below is also 2 to 5 mil silver grey, but using a non-UV-resistant resin. And you can see a significant colour change in literally two to three weeks. The point is, would you accept this? Or more importantly, would your customer accept this? Areas covered by cars or wheelie bins will differ from exposed areas over time. We made this sample using a non-UV resistant resin. We then applied strips of duct tape. We left it outside for two to three weeks in direct sunlight. After that period, we removed the strips of duct tape. And you can clearly see the difference. Of course, UV stable resin comes at a small price premium but compared to the expense of relaying a surface or having to deal with an unhappy customer, we believe it is well worth the extra cost. It is essential that the dried aggregate you use is as clean as possible in order to avoid contamination. Daltex aggregates are washed prior to being dried. To show the importance of using a clean aggregate, here we have two samples. One is in its natural state and one has been washed. See if you can spot the difference.
The aggregate must be dry. Do not use aggregates that appear to be damp in bags, as the resin may react with the moisture and lead to clouding and patching. Dust can soak up resin and create a cloudy finish. It is impossible to remove all dust from aggregates. However, in order to minimize dust content, we meticulously dry our Daltex dried aggregates and screen them, taking out the largest and smallest stones so that the exact grading for resin bound is achieved. The importance of good strong packaging, which is clearly labeled, cannot be overstated. We have an inline bagging system, which automatically inkjets the product name onto the bag. We have also invested in the very latest hooders, which protect Daltex bags with waterproof hoods and ensure the product leaves us in pristine condition. Bespoke orders are also available, with part and mixed pallets assembled on our automated system ready for distribution. Of course, it is critical that the stock you require is available, and at Derbyshire Specialist Aggregates, we are committed to 100% stock availability. We produce production runs of our most popular products in 300 ton runs, and that ensures quality and consistency, and we carry finished stock levels ready for dispatch of 4,000 tons. Our experience and research shows that the correct ratio of resin to aggregates is critical to achieving a lasting, durable finish. To ensure the required tensile strength for application, we recommend a minimum depth for driveways of 18 mm. Pathways with foot traffic only can be reduced to 15 mm. Our recommended mix for our 7.5 kilo UVR Plus resin pack consists of three bags of 2 to 5 mm stone, which is 75 kilo, one bag of 1 to 3 mm stone at 25 kilo, plus a 6.25 kilo bag of C52 sand which gives a total weight of 106.25 kilo, not including the resin content. Our recommended 7.5 kilogram UVR resin mix delivers resin coverage of 7.05% and covers approximately 3.55 squared meters at 18 millimeter depth and four squared meters at 15 millimeter depth. We believe it provides a higher resin content and gives a greater surface area bond, particularly in low density aggregates. A stronger surface bond delivers a greater tensile strength and therefore it's less susceptible to moisture penetration and has a reduced risk of reflective cracking. Mixing the resin is a very important part of the process. Our two-part kit is designed to make consistent, high-quality and high-performance mixing as easy as possible. To achieve this, it is critical that both parts are mixed together in exact proportions. To ensure no accidental splashes, mix the resin in the container on a plasterer's board or some other protective surface. Add part B to part A. As in order for the resin to cure properly, it needs all of the hardener in the mix. Less hardener will result in some of the resin failing to cure. If the part B looks milky or has crystals within it, it has been exposed to moisture and should not be used. Make sure the resin container is secure between your feet before you start mixing. Mix the resin thoroughly with a slow start eye torque drill and paddle for a minimum of 60 seconds. The resin will marble when you start to mix. You are looking for it to become one consistent colour. A good tip is to dip the drill to the bottom of the pot and keep lifting it. If the resin is consistent in colour then you can move to the next step. The working time for the resin is approximately 30 minutes at 20 degrees C. The curing time is approximately 8 hours, however we do not recommend any foot traffic for at least 24 hours after laying. Resin is heat sensitive, so for every 10 degree rise in temperature, the curing time is halved. For this reason, we recommend that you try to keep the resin as cool as possible. It's not a good idea to keep resin in your van or in direct sunlight on a hot day. A reflective cover can also help keep the resin cool. As aggregates can also absorb heat, they should also be kept from direct sunlight. It's important that you avoid moisture at all costs. This can cause the resin to foam and cloud, resulting in unsightly white stains on the finished surface. It's always handy to have a tarpaulin available in case of any unexpected rain showers, and this is especially important before the resin has had a chance to cure.
Resins are safe, however they should be used carefully. Please use the correct protective equipment including PVC gloves or gauntlets and overalls to protect skin contact. Before any mixes are made, here's an essential checklist that can save you time and money. Do not attempt an installation if rain is forecast during or within four hours of completion. It's time for a weather app on your phone. Is the ground surface wet? An outdoor hydrometer to test for humidity is very useful. It can tell you if the surface temperature is at least 3 degrees higher than the dew point temperature and if the humidity level is below 80%. If it is, it's okay, but any higher and there is a chance of moisture or rain in the air. Be prepared to delay the project. Make sure the surface has been primed and is dry. Check your materials for quantity, batch, color and to re-measure the area to be sure you have all you need to complete the project. Make sure all your equipment is ready and clean for use and that the area has been prepared with all cracks repaired and edging protected with tape to avoid resin staining. If everything is looking positive, then you can begin installation. The process of mixing and laying is simple but requires accuracy at every stage. There aren't any shortcuts. We recommend that you begin by sorting the dried aggregate into batches. And please remember that stone is a natural product, so bags of aggregates from each pallet should be mixed to guarantee consistency. The formula for mixing resin with dried aggregates has been carefully designed and it is so important that the specified blend is not varied. To achieve an optimum strength surface, a resin-bound installation should consist of UV stable resin and hardener 7.5 kilograms a blend of 75% 2 to 5 mm dried aggregate and 25% 1 to 3 mm stone that's four bags in total one bag of 6.25 kilograms of C52 sand fine crushed glass to broadcast on the surface to provide slip resistance when laying a resin driveway, your installation team should consist of at least three people. These are the mixer, the looter, the troweler. Each has a series of key roles and responsibilities to ensure the work is completed safely, effectively and without wasting any time or money. The mixer is responsible for the following. Stage one, place one 25 kilogram bag two to five millimetre stone and one 25 kilogram bag of one to three millimetre stone into the mixer. Stage two, add the pre-mixed resin. Now is the time to start the stopwatch. Stage three, add the two remaining 25 kilogram bags of two to five millimetre stone. Stage four, slowly add the bag of C52 sand. Stages two to four must be mixed for the same duration during every mix. Failure to do this will cause colour variation in the mix. We strongly recommend you use a stopwatch when mixing. Once the sand has been added, make sure it has been distributed evenly throughout the mix. When ready, empty the mix into your lined barrel. Switch the mixer off, then ensure all mix is scraped out of the mixer, taking special care to remove it from the blaze and from the door opening. The force action mixer needs to be cleaned down after each mix. This avoids the build-up of resin and lengthy cleaning of cured resin at the end of each day. It also avoids contamination and clumping. Any residue from previous mixers could end up in a new mix causing problems for the troweler. The mixer should be wiped round with white spirit to remove all residue. The mixer should also check that everything is in good order and the blades are not worn, ideally after every mix. Excessive wear means uneven mixing. There are a few important things to remember. Do not use aggregates that are damp in the bags. Insufficient mixing time in the mixer can lead to uncoated material. Each mix must be mixed for exactly the same amount of time to avoid variations in color. For each batch, make sure the correct blend of aggregates is used. Keep aggregates in the shade if necessary. If they heat up, they will decrease the curing time of the resin. Laying a resin-bound surface on tarmac on a hot day will also decrease the curing time of the resin. 
Start the job early if it looks like it's going to be hot. The looter takes the mix to the troweler and tips manageable quantities of the material, ensuring the mix is spread as evenly as possible. This is important as too much material means more troweling and working on the mix. Most importantly, the looter needs to look at the surface that has been previously troweled and check for trowel marks and inconsistencies from every possible angle. Any marks or anomalies can be easily rectified at this stage before the mix is cured. The troweler's job is to plan the laying route and grid the area out in squares with chalk. The troweler also lays the battens in place to indicate where the looter is to tip the mix. Once the looter has leveled the mix, the troweler begins laying. A screed bar may be used prior to troweling. It's important the trowel is cleaned with white spirit before starting and also regularly throughout troweling. About every six strokes, a dirty trowel becomes increasingly sticky and will drag aggregate out of place. Take care when cleaning the trowel. White spirit will mark the surface. To avoid spillage, always clean in a direction away from yourself and the area you are troweling. Tidy edges make a real difference to the finished result. Start by leveling and packing aggregate up close to every edge to ensure there are no gaps. The troweler needs to knit the mix together, making sure the aggregates form a closely compacted level surface. The trowel should be used with the edge slightly raised away from the stroke. Keep a consistent, light but firm pressure. This will prevent the trowel digging into the mix. The mix should be troweled until the aggregates stop moving in a fluid movement and become solid. All this needs to be done in as few strokes as possible. A quick way to check it is level is to lay your trowel on the surface. This will show up any unwanted undulations. Finally, the surface is smoothed and given a final sheen or polish. The final stroke of the polish must always be in the same direction so that a uniform and consistent shine is achieved across the whole area. To test the mix as knitted and as compact, cut a section into the edge of the surface being troweled. It should remain intact. This is also a good way to check that you are troweling to the required depth consistently. Finally, remember to always leave the leading wet edge a little rough and unworked so that the next batch of aggregate can be seamlessly and easily blended into it. A light, even sprinkling of glass provides additional anti-slip qualities which we recommend for all installations. Once the job is finished, the area needs to be clearly marked out with cones and warning tape to help prevent people walking on the surface. It is a good idea to take a photo of the cones and tape in place to show your customers. A resin-bound system is only ever as stable as the base it is laid on. Let's look at the basis for resin-bound. Resin-bound can be overlaid onto an existing concrete or asphalt surface or suitable construction. If you start with the base, first we check for any movement or damage. Even though there are a few straight joints and damage to the front corner, these are easily rectifiable making this concrete base suitable for resin bound. Starting with the front door, we would recommend the installation of a step to improve the appearance of the property. Looking at the threshold edge on the left, we need to consider what edging to use to create an 18mm upstand. In this case, a flat block paving was used. Moving on to the boundary, you should never resin right up to a neighbour's boundary. If they replace their driveway or fence, it could damage your surface. In this instance, flat block paving edging was installed. 
The damage in the front right corner needed repair. It was cut out and removed to a minimum depth of 200mm and reinstated with 100mm of well compacted Type 1 MOT hardcore plus 100mm of concrete. Due to the slight backward slope of the drive, hidden HACO channels were installed next to the garage door. Before addressing the joints, the drive was power wash cleaned and weeds removed. The joints were repaired using a geotextile mat. Small undulations can be addressed with surface insulation, but make sure you have enough dried aggregate left to complete the project. Don't forget, new and existing bases require priming and sealing prior to installation. Make sure you use the correct primer for the surface you are working on. Now, let's look at the finished result. A tree's present. Consider how you will deal with any roots and always remember to advise the customer that tree roots always win. Replace any manholes with recessed alternatives such as screed trays or block paving drains. Check out curbs. Set block or concrete curbs to protrude to the level of the surface to be installed. We recommend 18 millimeters above the existing base edge. Double check the meterage required and allow for natural undulations. We recommend you over order by between 5 and 15% to allow for any variances. Don't forget, to complete any project, you should have the correct equipment available and all the materials ready before you begin the installation. Nothing is worse than not having enough dried aggregate or resin to complete the installation.